I was alive. Yeah. What, what were you thinking about? I was just thinking yesterday that, hello everybody, by the hello, way. Hello, Merry Christmas week. This is Merry Christmas. Christmas I was just thinking week. that we don't have a mistletoe in our house. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a mistletoe. So why don't we? <laughs> I don't know, honey. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe that's something we should look for today. <laughs> we're gonna do our <laughs> we're gonna do our final <laughs> Christmas shopping today. Is this in the way? And the Lord's going to help us. I have a very thorough list. And we went over it last night. But we need the Lord's help to be at the right store and find the right thing. Because it doesn't work to order anything online. We won't get it by... I mean, we've done that already. So this yeah, will be good. And we encourage everyone to stay out of the stress. You know, that yes. can come... One of the challenges is, okay, you get a great Christmas present for one person, but then you have whatever, you know, the rest of the family, and they think, well, I need to have, should have equal things for everybody, right? And so that's where you can start yes. to get, oh my, <laughs> now I got to go back to town to get something else so or, yesterday or, or go I, back online or whatever. Yeah, I'm the one that keeps, I have a notebook from year to year and I have every, all the kids, their mates, the grandkids, and then as we start to buy gifts, order gifts, the dollar amount. And it was so funny, Sarah came over yesterday and she was talking about some friends who the night before their family gift opening, and they have five in their family, they discovered that one of the children only had three gifts to open, and the other four had five. And it was the night before they were supposed to open gifts the next morning. <laughs> and so I was showing Steve my list, and I highlighted in yellow, we need three more stocking stuffers for these three grandchildren we need two more for our sons and then i i have it highlighted in yellow <laughs> and he got like that he was kind of like shaking his well, head it's, uh, <laughs> it's, well anyway but you've had some really good thoughts with christmas giving he's the one who orders stuff online he's uh, good at that so. Well, anyway, <laughs> we pray that you'll stay in the peace through all those kind of things. And I do have, uh, for sure, one short Christmas story. Maybe I'll do two. We'll see once here how things go today. But um, I like it when you read I, Christmas stories. Shall I read that now? Yes. And I we'll, might get myself a cup of coffee. And we'll have the announcements, unless I just do those right now. I'll, I'll, I'll do the announcements right now, I think. I, I can do them for and you. Then I can turn my iPad off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, or you sure. well no, that's fine. Okay, these are the announcements for this week of Christmas. Um... Wednesday, that's tonight, the TCC Youth Group are going Christmas caroling. They have a whole list of places, some care centers. Um, where else did I see they were going? The mall. The mall, I love that. Target. They deleted that one, I think. Oh. I'm not sure. Anyway. Okay. And they're going to end up eating at Mi Rancho's afterwards. So that's going to be a fun so night for the youth. Contact Linnea. Yeah. Maybe you should give that number in case. Linnea is 368-2771. If you know that you can join them. Sunday we're having a country Christmas. I love it. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Um, the worship team is Kent. Dudley, Chantel, and Bended Knee. Um, so both Pastor Steve and Kent will have Christmas messages. And there will be no meal. We're pretty sure about that because it's the morning after Christmas. Uh, no Zoom meeting on Thursday night. 
history in the making, uh, stretching out Christmas. Um, if you want tickets, you can get them now. The new date is January 8 and 9 at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can exchange tickets you've already purchased or just get new ones or if you need a refund. And we love to give. We love to give. For giving tithes and offerings to TCC, you can mail them to 10 Strike Community Church, Post Office Box 67, 10 Strike 56683, or give online, 10strikechurch.com. And you know what? Our giving, your giving, <clears throat> makes a difference. Yeah, right. It makes a difference. So thank you. Blessings. And just thank you for the Lord's blessing on all the giving. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that, Lord. Okay, well, this story is called The Gold and Ivory Tablecloth, and it's from the book uh, Christmas in My Heart. It's a series. There's 20 of them, and they're full of um, stories. And uh, Joseph Wheeler is the editor. He's the one that brought them all into these volumes. And um, he says at the beginning of this story, which was written by Howard C. Shade, he says, if this story were fiction, editors would reject it as being too implausible and too coincidental to have ever happened. Yet these storm-induced events did occur a number of years after Hitler's army armies had ravaged Europe of true stories of Christmas few are treasured and reread more than this one at Christmas time men and women everywhere gather in their churches to wonder anew at the greatest miracle the world has ever known but the story I like best to recall was not a miracle, not exactly, anyway. It happened to a pastor who was very young. His church, especially the building too, was very old. Once, long ago, it had flourished. Famous men had preached from its pulpit, prayed before its altar. Rich and poor alike had worshiped there and built it beautifully. Now the good days had passed from the, that section of town where it stood. But the pastor and his young wife believed in their run-down church. They felt that with paint, some hammers, and faith, they could get it in shape. Together they went to work. But late in December, a severe storm whipped through the river valley and the worst blow fell on the little church. A huge chunk of rain-soaked plaster fell out of the inside wall just behind the altar. Sorrowfully, the pastor and his wife swept away the mess, but they couldn't hide the ragged hole right in the front of the church. The pastor looked at it and had to remind himself quickly, Lord, your will be done in this. But his wife wept. Christmas is only two days away. That afternoon, the dispirited couple attended the auction held for the benefit of the youth group. The auctioneer opened a box and shook out its folds, and shook out of its folds a handsome gold and ivory lace tablecloth. It was a magnificent item, nearly 15 feet long, but it too dated from a long vanished era. Who today had any use for such an item? There were a few half-hearted bids, and then the pastor was seized with what he thought was a great idea, and he bid for it and he got it for $6.50. He 
He carried the cloth back to the church and tacked it up on the wall behind the altar. It completely hid the hole and the extraordinary beauty of its shimmering handwork cast a fine holiday glow over the pulpit area. It was a great triumph. Happily, he went back to preparing his Christmas sermon. Just before noon on the day of Christmas Eve, as the pastor was opening the church, he noticed a woman was standing in the cold by the bus stop. The bus won't be here for 40 minutes, he called. Why don't you come in the church and get warmed up? She told him that she had come from the city that morning to be interviewed for a job as a governess to the children of one of the wealthy families in town. But she had been turned down. She was a war refugee and her English was imperfect. The woman sat down in a pew and rubbed her hands and rested. After a while, she dropped her head and prayed. She looked up at the pastor as he began to adjust the great gold and ivory lace cloth across the hole. She rose suddenly and walked up the steps of the pulpit area and she looked at the tablecloth. The pastor smiled and, and started to tell her about the storm damage, but she didn't seem to listen. She took up a fold of the cloth and rubbed it between her fingers. It is mine, she said. It is my banquet cloth. She lifted up a corner and showed the surprised pastor that there were initials engraved on it. My husband had the cloth made especially for me in Brussels. There could not be another like it. For the next few minutes, the woman and the pastor talked excitedly together. She explained that she was Viennese and she and her husband had opposed the Nazis and decided to leave the country. They were advised to go separately. Her husband put her on a train for Switzerland. They planned that he would join her as soon as he could arrange to ship their household goods across the border. She never saw him again. Later she heard that he had died in a concentration camp. I've always felt that it was my fault to leave without him, she said. Perhaps these years of wandering have been my punishment. The pastor tried to comfort her, urged her to take the cloth with her, but she refused. And then she went away, got on the bus. As the church began to fill that same Christmas Eve, it was clear that the cloth was going to be a great success. It had been skillfully designed to look its best by candlelight. After the service, the pastor stood at the doorway. Many people told him that the church looked beautiful. One gentle-faced, middle-aged man, he was the local clock and watch repairman, looked rather puzzled. It is strange, he said in a soft accent. Many years ago, my wife, God rest her soul, I owned, her and I, we owned such a cloth in our home in Vienna. My wife put it on the table and here he smiled only when the bishop came to dinner. The pastor suddenly became very excited. He told the jeweler about the woman who had been in church earlier in the day. The startled jeweler clutched the pastor's arm. Can it be? Does she live? 
Together the two got in touch with the family who had interviewed her. Then in the pastor's car, they started for the city. And as Christmas day was born, this man and his wife who had been separated through so many saddened Christmases were reunited. To all who heard this story, the joyful purpose of the storm that had knocked a hole in the wall of the church was now quite clear. Of course, people said it was a miracle, but I think you will agree it was the season for miracles. God wink. That's I mean, what I, I was going to say. Major God wink. <laughs> We've been watching some Godwink yes. movies here lately. Yes. But, uh, like, like the editor said, if it was written fiction, you know. The, but see, that's the timing of God. Yes. He knows every detail of your life. Yes. And my life. Yes. And we don't have to worry about it. Yes. About things that we so easily can worry about because we can trust him. Hmm. that he's going to work it out. Anything you want to add to that? Well, I was just thinking, anyone that's listening to this, God wants you to be living right now in this world, this universe he's created for you. And he certainly wants his good, his life, his love for you to unfold. And I was thinking about when we were younger, I was on the farm in Leota, you were living different places because your mom and dad were pastoring churches in South Dakota, but it's almost like the way the Lord causes or helps people to find each other, even something like that finding, finding your mate. Um, it's like there's God winks all along the path. <laughs> well, he certainly wants to keep doing that as we, as, our, as we grow older, from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. So to, for us to just anticipate his help, his care, and I almost thought of, uh, almost like his humor, or there's something about that. You know, when someone winks at you, it's kind of like a lighthearted thing. I don't wink real well. Do you wink? Yeah, he winked. <laughs> but anyway, it's just like, um, we anticipate that, Lord. We anticipate that, even in this week even in this week, yeah. even as we take joy along with us today, she needs to find certain type of boots or shoes. And thank you, Lord, for your God wink for joy, finding the right one, mm -hmm. right pair. Something just came through my thoughts as you were sharing there. That this lady, I don't know how many years they had been separated, it doesn't say that, but it just says many Christmases. Mm -hmm. But but she sat in that pew and, and she warmed her hands, but she also did one other thing. What'd she do? She prayed. And the importance of prayer. Mm -hmm. And we continue to see that. Yes. That we need to pray. Ask yes. and you shall receive. Yes. Seek and you shall find. Yes. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. You know, that prayer might have been the final 
needed thing mm -hmm. for that connection because who knows I don't know if that man had been to church it seemed like the pastor didn't necessarily know the man I mean it didn't seem to indicate that right but he right. just decided to go to church that night well what did that mm -hmm. well it's when people pray things happen mm -hmm. and it and it help and it helps God to wink you might say yes prayers lead to God winks <laughs> Yeah. I like it. So, somebody's praying. Yeah, I like that. You know, I think it's in Matthew 7. You can read about that. Maybe 7-7. Seven, seven, you know, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Jesus said that. And so we just encourage you to continue to do that for mm -hmm. your loved ones. Yes. You know, sometimes at Christmas, it, or it, for some it can be a hard time because... Of loved ones that are estranged or whatever the situation is you know but to keep on praying and believing and for breakthroughs in our lives yeah and I think of the word anticipating God's answers God's intervention anticipating yeah. his Sometimes it surprises. Right. Yeah. But if you're watching today and you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, mm -hmm. you know, that's the most important yes. thing of all. Yes. You know, what is Christmas about? Joyce says a shirt, I think it says, Jesus is the reason for the season. And it says in Romans 10, 9, it says, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead we will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness which means being right with God and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation that means eternal life and so if you're watching this and you never have or done this if you never received mm -hmm. Christ or maybe you don't have assurance of it, you can do that right now. Just yes. repeat after me. God, I believe in you. God, I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, your son. I believe in Jesus, your son. I believe he was born in Bethlehem. I believe he was born in Bethlehem. Of the Virgin Mary. Of the Virgin Mary. And that he died for me. And that he died for me. On that cruel cross. On that cruel cross. He shed his blood for me. He shed his blood for me. And then he rose from the grave. And then he rose from the grave. After he suffered hell for me. After he suffered hell for me. And eternal death. And eternal death. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your eternal life. I receive your eternal life. I am a believer. I am a believer. In you. In you. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit. Into my life right now. Into my life right now. And I come into the family of God. And I come into the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you just, if you did that and you meant it from your heart. Yes did it by faith you're a believer now you've joined yes. the family of God the Holy Spirit yes. dwells inside of you so thank you Lord yes we thank and those you, of you that are watching that that know the Lord already you know this would be a good time to what do they call it share it mm -hmm. share this video like on Facebook mm -hmm. you know with your group you know just share it mm -hmm. with your group encourage mm -hmm. them to watch it Maybe those that need an encouraging story of Christmas, but also not need to know the Lord. Yes. So I did have another story, but I'm gonna wait. Maybe next next Wednesday I'll read that next. It's still Christmas Sounds week, good. right? So we can still <laughs> read a Christmas story, right? Yes. 
So maybe I'll do that next week. Because we'll we're extending Christmas we're extending here. Extending Christmas TV. anyway. <laughs> we're still going to have a Christmas play. Yes. And for that too, if you haven't gotten a ticket yet, you yes. can. How do they do that? They can get them here at the church on mm -hmm. Sunday. Call Andrew, what's his number? Five five six seven seven nine five. Five five six seven seven nine five with a two one eight in front. I suppose you all know that probably. Well, blessings to yes, you. Yes, Christmas blessings. Did you want to say hi, Joy? <laughs> oh, you already did. Okay, well that's that makes Joy, it fun. <laughs> our oldest granddaughter. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you? Okay. Did you have something else? No, I just said go? Christmas blessings. We love you all. Yes, and we will see many of you Sunday, either here in person or online. Otherwise, yeah, well, you can all join us online, I guess, at some point, because they're archived too. I mean, if you don't get to watch it live, you can watch it later. Goodbye. <laughs>